Hello my friends, Uncle Misha is here and today in um, on Inside Out Electronic Channel we will try to update or um, improve one of my uh, very quite quite old actually projects. So if you are familiar with this thing that I'm holding in my hand, you probably uh, know what I'm talking about. But if you're not, so this is a pan and tilt head called Bescore MP101. Several years ago I released video when I modified this head to be controllable via Bluetooth. Because what uh, quickly what does it do? This particular head can do the following. In automatic mode, it just keeps panning. For example, if you just leave it, it just goes right like this. Okay. And uh, I honestly don't remember what else it's doing. Yeah, okay, it just keeps spinning. In manual mode, you can control it with remote socket. Um, it can it can, can it, it can do pan and tilt over here. So this base is tilting. So for, and you can connect your camera and you can control it. So what I've done, I inserted in here a microcontroller and you can check my pretty old video microcontroller uh, which was based on um, Arduino Uno essentially it was I think 328 microcontroller with a simple a serial Bluetooth a chip so and then I wrote a little program which actually a uh, send serial commands over the Bluetooth many years has gone since then and I was actually using this thing uh, to take some of the pictures uh, remotely for example not to disturb any birds and animals it was really really useful this actually was my idea behind it uh, but uh, it came up with the idea that uh, uh, to improve it okay because many people actually ask me oh, can uh, I, I would like to improve or modify my best core mp101 but it seems to be very complicated you know how to do it it's uh, it doesn't have soldering skill you have to be really digging inside all right so what i've decided to do there is a connector over here i could have actually done it at first place with the original microcontroller but there is a connector over here okay recently i bought this so this is comes in here so i was thinking like what if i whip up microcontroller oopsies externally You know and just control it without uh, much of a digging inside this uh, this box uh, decide the head uh, inside the head itself so and also I decided to pick a the one of the best candidates for such job so this is uh, the fruit it's a BC um, Express and it's based on NRF 52840 from Nordic semiconductor the reason is because look at how tiny it is Okay, this is super tiny even in comparison to the my original video to the Arduino Nano, I think. So this is pretty much the same size, but way more powerful. Also, it's way more uh, energy efficient, even with Bluetooth working. So I decided to improve uh, this head using uh, this product now. So the for two two main features here first of all a i'm not going to dig inside not going to solder anything just using external interface also there is a power here so i can power this device straight from this socket so uh, i haven't actually uh, done anything so we're going to be doing this together with you so this is essentially going to be not just uh, a how to and going to be a little bit of research so uh, general idea is to connect this microcontroller to this socket and uh, write simple program to control it okay so let's do it so for this project you would need obviously uh, this sort of connector this is seven pin DIN connector which is compatible with this one and I can uh, put you a link so it's obviously come with this sort of thingy uh, shroud I can put you a link where to get one I got it from eBay I think then you, can, you would need a bunch of wires so because we're gonna do, be doing this on breadboard for the first right before we actually um, before we actually go over and uh, 
made a proper solution first we're gonna try it on the breadboard um, so you would need uh, a bit of a wire so I'm gonna be using this particular wires so you're gonna just cut them uh, probably cut them in half Do I, this is gonna be good enough I think yeah it's gonna be good enough maybe I maybe more than two I don't know so and then uh, when everything is working we have to uh, we have to create a little program which is going to be controlling this thing when everything is working and we also would have to come up with a bluetooth sorry yes with a, the, the little app on the on a phone which actually controls this over the bluetooth okay so uh, let's first make all electrical connections and then we will try to create a little program and go from there so first of all, let's just uh, connect all necessary pins to those uh, jumper wires. So here is the, I printed out the big, 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 big a pin out of this, um, of this connector. So uh, number one is a, a voltage, sorry for the faded print type here, but essentially this is B+, plus. it's a battery. Power. First, I thought this is going to be running at 5 volts, uh, but no, I don't think there is uh, any stabilizer in this head. It's um, it's going to run at whatever battery voltage is. So that has to be your 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 uh, voltage microcontroller or voltage regulator has to be capable of handling that. So yeah, number one over here, that is the uh, uh, power essentially five or six volts depending on your voltages. So then we have left right very interesting left right two three left right and what is up and down four five four five is up and down number seven is speed I have no idea what it is and six is a ground so yeah six and one is a we we're going to use them for the powering the device and uh, two four five three to control the direction okay so let's uh, try to whip it up and uh, it's always tricky to solder this sort of thing, so we come up with the following solution. Chunk of copper. Well, let's try first is this guy. The reason I'm doing that, because I'm afraid to melt them. At the same time, it's gonna be uh, holding quite well. So, today I'm using my Kota soldering. Uh, let's prepare the wire first. Okay, so for power, we have this red, obviously, five volts red, and I have this very fancy, wire stripper I think we need like a little bit I'm gonna just insert it right in here like this nicely
Okay, here we are. I also marked those uh, wires in accordance to this uh, table here. So one, two, three, four little lines just to make sure that not to like every time figure out which one is what. So let's zoom out like this. And we don't need this anymore. Probably keep it as a reference right here on the table. But now we can plug it in easily. And I just thought that's going to be easy. Yeah, well, still easier. And detach easily. So in order to be it locked, so it needs to be just pulled like this and then slide like that. And now it's going to stay like this and like this. So now it's going to be easy. So let's take our multimeter and see what do we have here. Let's power this little boy up, put it into manual mode like M here and measure the voltage. This is negative, this is positive and we have five, pretty much six volts. So now we have to make sure that our microcontroller, a, a voltage regulator can handle that. It's very important. So five volts, we know it's gonna handle, but I'm not sure if it's gonna handle more than than a five volts. So let's double check um, specs and make sure this voltage regulator over here can take six volts. Okay, I think we are lucky today. And here is the official um, uh, Adafruit website and battery input. Power source, the voltage can only be from 3.5 volt to 6 volt. So yes, we are lucky today and uh, our little guy here can take 6 volt. Let's power it down, let's connect ground and bat battery. So we connected our microcontroller. Now we have to figure out how to connect with this little guy, four of them. So I already soldered it, uh, let me take some pointy thingy, soldered it 13, 12, 11 and 10 pins, uh, digital pins on microcontroller. So what do we need to do? We need to, okay, let's take our piece of paper here, a little markery thingy and say, let's say, let's just map them. Okay, let's go number one. It's not, so let's untangle this, well, just like that. So number one, gonna be 13, 12, just let's just do it simple, and 10. I may change it later, but right now, just for heck of it, for simplicity, then go two, then goes three, then goes four. Four little um, pins here, like you see. Deet, deet, deet. Okay, so now we are f f uh, physically connected, the pins. So now we have to go to our computer and actually create an Arduino sketch, which would actually control each of those guys individually. And uh, because at the moment I'm not going to hook up it to Bluetooth or anything like that. So, so what I would like to do is just actually move it one direction, another direction, just pretty much cycle to uh, different movements and see how um, best core head reacts on that. If everything is fine, I will continue into something more intelligent, but at the moment, let's just do that. Very, very simple and crude sketch. So uh, I'm gonna now switch to the computer view and we quickly see what kind of sketch I'm gonna upload uh, into this guy. All right, guys, so here's our sketch. And first of all, we define a pins which are associated with each individual connector on the best core. Then I have constant for a delay, which is going to be five seconds. So there are commands um, for up, down, left, right, and stop. And here's the function which actually does the job. So it actually moves head. So it sets move, moves head. So it sets uh, based on command. It sets appropriate pins to low or high. For example, for tilt up, it says it sets uh, up pin to high. Um, then this is setup function actually will be executed before loop and if you go into loop I just call move head tilt up then delay oh that's a mistake here 
and then till down and delay then left delay and then right delay and then it's gonna repeat itself many many times so uh, let's program it into our microcontroller and see how it works so here's our microcontroller and let's just flush it I, I use, here I use debug information just to see if everything goes bonkers uh, but looks like everything gonna be fine all right, so our device is programmed, and let's hook it up. Uh, let's hook it up to the um, uh, Bescore MP101 and see how it works. So now, when we programmed our microcontroller uh, over here into just keep looping the uh, left, right, up, down, in just keep looping, keep looping, keep looping. Let's actually see it in action. So in order to power this little dude up and also power the microcontroller, we just switch it to M. Oh, it just start doing something immediately, obviously, because this is real-time controller, and it just start executing the code immediately on power on. Oh, I didn't think about that one. <laughs> it's gonna just keep pulling the board with it. So, yeah, there's something, like, obviously, this has to be, yeah. <laughs> It's hilarious. Anyways, it's working. It's working uh, a treat. So I love it. So now we have to just take it and uh, make it work with the cell phone over here. So uh, uh, let's just power it off. So clearly it's working. So now we have to modify our code, which is probably will be a little bit more substantial task uh, in order to modify the code and also create the Android application. Uh, and uh, I think I'm going to cover it in part two of this video because it's a quite substantial amount of work in order to have it uh, going. But the proof of concept right here in front of you um, and uh, mechanically and electronically it's working and uh, I just have to create a controller app and also the specific sketch which actually talk to the cell phone so guys it's gonna be definitely part two and we have actually great success of making this microcontroller to work with this a um, uh, best core mp 101 the reason I was not 100% sure because this little guy over here has 3.3 volt logic this guy over here has 5 volt logic so I was not sure if it's gonna fly or not seems to be it is working so guys, please tune up for the second episode of uh, Best Core MP101 modification. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Ciao.